Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again today. In the past, I have done a video showing you and describing all of the options and functions of Presonus Studio Channel Microphone Preamp Channel Strip. I thought in this video, I go the next step and now show you and let you hear what the preamp, microphone preamp sounds like with all of its options available. So I will go through most of the basic functions and adjust them so you can hear the difference what the preamplifier actually does. To demonstrate in this video, I have my MXL550 condenser microphone connected into the back of the unit. I had to run a special cable for it because at the moment it's connected to my patch bay and I don't connect the microphone directly to it but that's the whole purpose of this demonstration so I have it connected directly to the back of the unit and from the studio channel line output it's connected to my audio interface so that I can record the audio and that's what you're hearing right now so you can have an idea of what it actually sounds like so basically what you're hearing now is the MXL microphone connected directly into it. I don't have anything enabled. It's uh, compression and EQ have been bypassed. The tube has been turned off completely. The output is at minus, I think, minus 10 dB because I don't want to override the uh, my audio interface so that it doesn't distort. And the input is about 45 dB of gain uh, to the microphone. And that's what you are hearing. So let's go through some of the settings. I will start from the from the left hand side and then walk you through just like in the previous uh, video. And so you can hear and the difference that the, uh, the preamplifier will actually make. So I've got 48 volt, obviously phantom power turned on. And there are five, few buttons here that we can press to sort of quickly demonstrate is the phase switch. Now the phase is not going to make much difference because it just changed the phase and it's only useful if you have multiple uh, microphones connected in the same room that you're recording in case there's any can uh, phase cancellations. But just to demonstrate, I'm just going to press it down now. So now it's different phase. In my headphone I'm hearing a little bit different because these headphones, the AKG um, 240 Mac 2s, they are open-ended, so sound will be escaping. So it actually, when I turn my headphone, I can actually hear some phasing. Not sure if you're going to hear it on the um, on the video, but that's what actually is happening. So there's some phase differences there. And this is in normal phase. And then we have the minus 20 dB. And that cuts off my voice. That cuts off my voice. Um, minus 20 dB, so like muting, but that's very useful if you've got very hot microphone input, very loud microphone input, and you want to reduce it so you don't actually um, distort the input of your preamp as well. And then it has the 80 Hz high pass, so we get rid of anything below 80 Hz. So I'm just going to press that, and now my voice might get a little bit brighter because it's actually getting rid of all of the low end. So this is my microphone, I'm trying to talk low. This is with the low pass filter turned off. So there's more bottom end. <laughs> now, with it turned on, there's less. So I hope that's demonstrating it enough what it actually does. So the next I'm going to play around is with the tube. At the moment it's turned off. So I'm just going to slowly increase the tubing so you can actually hear subtle uh, distortion and warmth coming up from the tube and as I turn it I'm at about 20% so basically it's mixing the direct signal and adding it the tube signal combined later on so that's what that thing does so as I increase to about 40% now there's some warmth you can I, I can already hear in my headphones how it's getting warm and it's usually for vocals I like to put around 30% or so depending how hard I want to get the vocal sounding and obviously you can increase it even more now I'm at about 60% tube warmed and I'm getting 70% about 80% you can already tell how my voice is distorted and this is about 100% uh, 
um, tube. So that's what you, you are hearing. I'm just making sure that it's not distorting um, while it's recording the audio. So you can hear the distortion in there, but this is the tube distortion. It's not the microphone distortion. So it all depends what effect you want to get. But I prefer my vocals when I'm recording to give a new nice warm and a little bit of grit, uh, about 30% or so. So I don't go any more than 40%. But if I'm playing um, a guitar and I want a little bit of uh, roughness and distortion in the guitar, you know, some acoustic guitar, you, you'll be surprised that tiny bit of tube distortion, how much warmth it actually going to give and liveliness it actually gives to the acoustic guitars, um, whether plugged in directly or through, through the microphone. But that's what we normally get. So I'm just going to turn the tubing off now that you know what it sounds like. Next, I'm going to turn on the compression and then we'll be able to see what the compression settings we've got. Now I have compression on, but there's no compression setting any happening. Let's increase. I've got the attack on fastest and the release on the fastest and makeup gain is zero. And the ratio is um, one to one. So I'm just going to increase it maybe to, to two. And this is uh, compression coming in um, one to two. Now with the gain reduction meter, it's really handy because when I press it, on the screen, I can see how much gain reduction I'm getting. Then I can use the uh, the ratio that I want as well as the uh, threshold to bring it down so I get the compression that I need. Just bringing the threshold down to get a little bit of compression. And I'm already starting to get a little bit of compression, about no more than a couple dB, couple dB compression. And as I bring more and more of my threshold down, and you can hear now my vocal is getting less and less because there's about minus 7 dB of compression happening, so it's getting really low. For vocals, I usually put around, you know, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, and if I really want sort of hard rock, loud uh, vocal uh, right in your face, you know, I might increase it up to 5, and that should give me um, a lot more compression. And, you know, as you can hear now, that's on fast. And if I put on, this is slow attack, so it's taking even longer for the slow, uh, for the for the compression to come on. And this is the slowest release as well. So it's really long attack and long um, release. And if we put it into fast attack, slow release, sort of really compresses it down and holds it there. For vocals, I usually have it down to the fastest and couple clicks back. And with the release again to the fastest release, couple clicks back and then another couple clicks after that. That gives me, you know, nice, quick, uh, capture the right, the transients, give me a smooth audio uh, coming out. So a nice level and balance. So with not too much compression because all I want to do is control the sound coming in and not really compress it. I normally do a little bit more compression in my DAW um, to control it. So uh, what we're hearing now is about what I would use for the compression. Now, obviously, you can have um, soft knee as well. So I'm just going to press the soft knee. That gives it a little bit more sort of um, gain and a bit softer uh, compression rather than as soon as it reaches the threshold to slam it down, it'll be easier on that. It works really nice with vocals for that one. And when you press the auto, that disables the attack and release, so it becomes automatic. So after, you know, um, obviously it's not digital, so it's not going to pre-listen and adjust it. So it adjusts itself as you are talking and singing. So after a few takes, it will adjust itself and get give you really nice, good results. With the, the next button, EQ before compression, I'll do that when I actually enable the uh, EQ on. So I'm just going to disable the auto compression off. And it's done. Okay, let's move on to our EQ and see what we can do with our EQ. I'm just going to enable it. Um, now that it's enabled, now you can hear it sound a little bit different. It's a little bit brighter because that's how I like to record it. 
And I'll tell you why it's brighter. I'll tell you what the settings that I have at the moment. Uh, there are three, it's a parametric EQ, and I have uh, three points, low, mid, and high. Now, my low is set as a shelf, and it's set at about 120 hertz, and it's got minus 2 dB shelving. So it's sort of uh, after 120 hertz, so it's being sort of, uh, bef I should say, before 120 hertz, uh, it's being shelved down. So getting rid of some of the low end that I don't need for my vocals. And then my mid frequency is set at about about one kilohertz, and I'm reducing about three uh, two point five dB um, uh, for that one, and it's got a narrow Q, and I'm just trying to get rid of a little bit of the harshness in my voice around that frequency um, that um, I've noticed that I have. So you know, easing it a little bit. As you can see, all the EQ settings are very subtle. You know, uh, the gain and reductions are very subtle. And my third high frequency is set about two, three and a half kilohertz. And again, it's shelving, but this time I'm actually boosting 4 dB. Now, the reason I'm doing that, and you might notice that uh, all of my S's, like uh, the snake slithering in the sand, are very bright. And the reason I do that, so that my microphone, uh, when I capture the voice, it's got a nice bright voice. Even though Sibelius is really loud, um, but I, won't, I wouldn't normally leave it that way. Later on in my mixing pro, uh, stage, I use the easer to ease those S's down. I have to apologize, probably too many S's there. Um, I, I need to ease it down so that it captures all those S's and controls them, but at the same time, I still get nice and bright and airy sound for my vocals. So that's how I have my thing set up. I usually adjust a tiny bit here and there, have a listen to the person I'm recording the vocals, and adjust those things uh, slightly to, to get it. But normally for vocals, that's what I leave it on. And now that we have compression and EQ, it's compression and then an EQ. If we press the EQ before compression button, now what will happen, it will swap. So you'll hear slightly bit different because it's being EQ'd and then compressed. So you might hear my vocal uh, sort of volume up maybe one or two dB. That's because all of the low end energy is now gone. So the compressor is only working on the controlled audio. That's sort of my preferences. And again, depends what I'm recording, obviously. Sometimes uh, for guitars, or, uh, or other instruments that I'm recording, I might actually prefer compression before EQ so that I'm controlling the sound level before I shape it. So it all depends on the application, obviously. So that's what it basically sound like. Um, I'm just gonna reduce the um, Sibelius a little bit because obviously it's too loud. And that's what it sound like. Microphone in, line out, recorded. So um, why don't we give a little bit of um, vocal training for my MXL 550, which is one of my favorite microphones, next to my Rode NT1 that I have sitting at the back. Um, but this is uh, one of my popular ones that I uh, choose to use. It's a very good microphone. I have reviewed it. You might want to um, click here and watch the video um, about the MXL 550. So here we go. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. It's not warm when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. She's always gone too long. Anytime she goes away. Okay, maybe we might increase the tubing to get the tube effect and see how it sounds now. I've got about 40% tube compression, which is a little bit higher than I normally do. See how it actually sounds with the tube effect turned on. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. It's not warm when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. She's always gone too long. Anytime she goes away. 
Well, that's the Presonus Studio Channel Tube Microphone Preamplifier. And if you have any questions in regards to the Studio Channel Microphone Preamplifier, feel free to comment below and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. And also, as always, don't forget to subscribe and give me the thumbs up as well. Um, and if you haven't visited my website, recordingstudio9.com, there's lots more information there as well. And until next time, as always, make great music. Cheerio. Bye-bye.